know what I'm doing. I won't be consistent enough. I won't be able to do it with my other kids around. I'll miss having the freedom slash free time when they're gone. My kids won't get the type of social interaction that they need. And inevitably, I won't do a good job. So if you have any of those same fears, stick with me, okay? Stick with this video because we're gonna talk through them. Y'all, it's my first day of being a homeschool mom and <laughs> I'm still digesting it all, but it's been funny because I feel like I've been like a bouncing ball back and forth, moment to moment, feeling stressed, then reminding myself that this is all our, on our own pace to then being stressed out again, to we're not in a race. We don't have to follow these traditional ways of doing school and whatever my children need is the most important thing. So as I walk through this brand new season for me of being a homeschool mom, I have a daughter named Sarai who is five years old. She's starting kindergarten. And I have a son named Micah who is three years old who is starting pre-K. Or he's done pre-K two, but he's technically now pre-K three. And so in this video, I wanted to address my biggest fears walking into homeschooling and attacking the fear for me is such a vital thing because I do not want to walk through this season feeling fear in any way, shape or form, at least without a way to quickly combat the fear and get back into a space of confidence. So here are some of my biggest fears about homeschooling. And I'm not even talking from a place of overcoming all of these fears because a lot of them are still current for me, but I wanted to just bring you into kind of the mindset that I have walking in this season, knowing that those are the fears that I have. So number one, I don't know what I'm doing. Now, the first thing that I did as starting this journey was research. Now I am the type of girl, okay, that will spend so much time researching that I kind of get lost in the research or I won't research at all and I just jump into things. So like when it came to having a home birth and well not a home birth, my first natural birth was a water birth. When it came to having a water birth, I didn't watch any videos. I didn't do any research. I just felt led that that was what I was supposed to do at a birth center and I had heard a little bit about it when I took a birthing class and that was it. Hey baby, there's Sarai, say hi baby. But when it came to this, I knew. Coming from where I come from, I have a bachelor's degree in human development and child studies, which is funny because I never thought I was gonna use my degree, but here we are. And then I also have a master degree in education, specifically in higher education with a focus on leadership. So I'm highly educated. And at the same time, that was what made me fearful the most about homeschooling, was that I would not be able to give my kids what they needed in totality. And I knew that I never grew up homeschooling. I didn't even have friends that homeschooled. So I have no clue what I'm doing. And for me in this arena, I had to research. I had to dive in. I had to ask people questions. I had to ask my friends that are homeschoolers now what they use, what they do, what do their days look like, all of that kind of thing. And I also had to remind myself that I do not have the type of job that my parents had. My parents were in the military, so their schedules were very much like the same every day, all the time, very structured. And so being in a formalized educational experience was beneficial because they knew when they would have to watch us or have us and when we would be at school. and knew that we would get everything we needed at school and we'd do a little homework after school and that'd be about it that they were responsible for when it came to our education. But for me, I live a completely opposite life. I live a very fluid, obviously as a content creator and I've been a content creator for years at this point. I've been full-time creating content six, since 2016 been a content creator since 2010. So I've been in this space of a creative entrepreneurial pursuit as a career for a long time. So I don't have that same kind of structured schedule every day. And I was worried about that when it came to homeschooling. 
and just like, how was I going to even like approach that, like scheduling and like all the things. And so it took me even in my motherhood journey a long time to get comfortable with a schedule again, because I went from no schedule at all, literally like whenever I woke up is when my day started kind of thing before she was born. So then now, four kids later, we kind of have the kids on a routine now. So I based our homeschool schedule off of what we already kind of naturally do as like our rhythm as a family, which helped me fight the fear of feeling like I wasn't gonna be consistent enough because that's a huge thing. It's like, was I gonna be able to commit to getting into their homeschool curriculum four days out of the week, which is what we're doing. We have a four day school a week and really dedicating myself to that. And I immediately said, yes, I can do this because I have to choose it. If I choose it, I'm gonna stick to it. And even if I fall off for a day, a couple days, even a week, I can always jump back in with the kids because the kids, they are actually a lot more resilient and malleable than we think. Even if like, for example, Sarai went to a formal private pre-K program last year, pre-K four, and she hasn't worked on anything all summer. We've kind of played with numbers and letters here and there, but she hasn't been nowhere near what I think people would say would be like a summer school kind of like routine at all. Yet today, when we were working on her letters and her numbers and counting, she picked it up like that, okay? And that was something I was actually really concerned about with her because I felt that she was being pushed a little bit more than I'd like her to be in pre-K four to get ready for kindergarten because technically she's a younger four and she's slightly more creative. So she's not really retaining a lot of the information that she was getting at school as much as the other kids were still gifted still super smart but like her ability to like stay focused was a little lacking and it's not like it's not normal for her age it just was that she was being compared to kids that were a little bit more advanced than her at least in like a school setting and so i kept that in mind with her now which is to just going at her own pace. And today she did great. So I was so excited about that. And that really helped that fear of feeling like I, A, didn't know what I was doing and B, wasn't going to be able to give my kids the type of education that they needed. So we hit multiple fears with just one experience today. I also felt like I was gonna miss my free time or like my time away from the kids. Obviously like them being away at school gave us a breather throughout the day, even though now, well, last year we still had MJ. And so he was little, but he was, you know, he was good by himself, but now we have Emery as well. So just considering just having two kids here and then two kids, you know, away at school, we really weren't gonna get a break at all. So I was like, I'm gonna, I'm worried about that. Like, am I gonna have enough time for myself? I'm not gonna have, am I gonna have enough time for work, blah, blah, blah. So our resolve for that was we actually have kind of a, a split day routine for now and seeing how that works for us, which is I handle the homeschool is really in the morning for our family. And then from one to five is my work time. And really my time, if I need to run out of the house or I need to go do something, then I would do it during that one to five time, Monday through Thursday. So that actually puts me at ease knowing that like, if I really need it, like a moment, like I need to get out of the house, I need to go to a coffee shop, I need to just like exit for a little bit. My family is set up, they already know, like that's the time when Mark is with the kids, him and my sister Madison who lives with us, they are tag teaming, they got the kids and I can go do whatever I need to do because I am the one who is also working. I need to make sure that there's a balance happening there and luckily, this is also part of my work, is creating this content and documenting this process. So it flows really easily together to where I'm not like having to go clock in somewhere else. Like I said, I've been on this very creative, fluid journey of being a creative entrepreneur for years. So to adjust in this way actually is 
smoother than I thought it would be um, in, in, in reality. So the next fear was not getting the kids enough social interaction. So that's one thing that a lot of people say first usually is like, how are you gonna make sure that your kids know how to play with other kids and they have like that social engagement that they need as they grow up? For us, first off, there's four of them, technically five of them, but their biggest sister lives with her mom in New York, so she's not with us all the time. So primarily at home, it's four of them. And as they grow older, they'll be more socially engaged with each other. So that's not a huge concern for me at all, uh, but it did, linger a little bit because I was like, even that is good, but I still want them to have experiences outside of the home, whether it be extracurricular activities or just like learning about things outside or just getting other experiences. So some of the ways that we are going to do that is we actually have a couple different families that have kids that are like our kids ages. So we already get together with them quite a bit, but making more of an intentional effort to get together to do things specifically with the kids. So doing outings, uh, taking them to do different activities is gonna definitely be on more top of mind now. And then also in our area, there's tons of co-ops. So homeschool co-ops where people get together and have more of a formalized co-op, which is gonna be like an actual curriculum and like there's like multiple days a week that you go and you contribute wherever. There's a lot, that's like a whole, There's a, that's a whole world in itself. And so I felt like that was a bit much for us for our first year. I don't think we're really interested in a co-op right now. I feel very comfortable where we're at, kind of navigating it ourselves for a while and then as I see the kids kind of gravitating towards different interests, then I'll start looking for things that are more in alignment with that. So like even for Sarai, she's now in a dance program. And so she goes to dance twice a week and that's her thing because she was showing so much interest in dance and I knew that she would get that social interaction there. So that's good enough. And even I was a little nervous about her not being at the school that she was at last year because she had so many great friends at her school and I was scared that she was gonna miss them and like, you know, that whole thing, but she ain't pressed. Like she has been so good about being excited about homeschool and wanting to be in this room <laughs> and with me and with us. And what have you thought so far, baby? How's it been so far? <laughs> She's so goofy. How do you, do you like it or you don't like it being at home with me? I do like it a little bit. You do like it a little bit? <laughs> I like oh. to have something. Yeah, hey, hey. It's all right, hush. <laughs> On top of the co-op kind of thing for the future and dance class, we're also gonna be planning some outings and I'm gonna try to align them with their curriculum. But Micah and Sora are so young right now that we can literally go do anything and make it make sense for, you know, finding letters on the signs and counting and, you know, things like that. We can, it's pretty easy right now. And that's what I'm realizing is that homeschooling is a lot less intense than I anticipated and really it is all about what pace you want to go at it with and how far or how slow less more whatever you want to do whatever works best for your family that's really what you do and so that's the exciting part is like kind of discovering what that looks like for us and going from there so if you're somebody who is concerned or has some fears but interest in homeschooling <laughs> I totally encourage you to do some research. I also watched a lot of YouTube videos. That was a huge part of my research was watching other moms talk about their experience, especially since for me, I'm essentially homeschooling two kids for the first time this year and then next year it'll increase one more and then a couple years from there it'll increase again. So I will have at one point four children going in to homeschool all at different levels. So I'm mentally trying to like prepare for that too, of just like, okay, what is it gonna look like for us with more kids in the mix? And so that's the biggest thing that I'm, what baby? Cause there is a little bit of anxiety, right? Like when you're doing something new and it's such an important thing, it's such a vital thing for your children. Like 
oh my God, I'm responsible for them knowing how to read and write and that, all of that, that's like a lot. But it's really not because what I've noticed as I've been preparing for this has been that my children are really smart. And I don't say that because somebody else's children are not. I say that as in kids are smart. Children are smart innately. And it's just a matter of like giving them the opportunity to explore their minds. It is. That's right. To explore their minds at the pace that works best for them. And that's something that they don't get in a traditional school setting. And I talked about this in a post that I put on Instagram a couple weeks ago now, but it was like this idea that even if you can't homeschool, like making an effort to do something educational with your children as an effort to bond with them is so, so important because you could totally be making core memories, doing something that you are both interested in and finding what that is. Cause maybe right now you don't know, maybe your kids are just into Spider-Man, Bluey, and you know, Disney princess, whatever. Like there's nothing else that they're really into. That's okay because it may be your job to step in and show them new things show them some of the things that you enjoy to do. And if you don't even remember what you like to do because you've just been working like crazy for the past year, few years, whatever, discover something new together. Discover a new hobby, go to a farm, go to an aquarium, try to find things that are an opportunity for you to grow together and learn something new together. But that's how you make real core memories. Like. Let's get off our phones, get off these screens and actually go do stuff. Like my dad used to always say that, like, let's just go do stuff. And um, now do I really understand. Um, do stuff is fun. Do stuff is fun. <laughs> But that's all I got for y'all today. I hope you found this video to be encouraging, maybe a little inspiring. I know the school year is getting started for a lot of us. So even if you've got kids going to traditional school or you're starting to homeschool or whatever you may be doing, I hope you found this to be purposeful for you. And if you have any other questions about homeschool or like any specific videos that you want me to add to this series of homeschool videos, then definitely drop your ideas down below, your questions, your concerns, just, you know, let's chat more in the comments down below because this series is called Our Homeschool because it's not just about my family doing homeschool, but it's about us, you and I doing homeschool together and learning from each other and sharing what's working, what's not working and all of those things because there's a lot of us that are starting to homeschool now and it's pretty exciting, but it's also a lot to kind of take in and navigate through. And so I just hope that these videos help you navigate whatever it is you're looking for in homeschooling or, you know, just having some sort of educational bonding experience with your children. I hope that these help you increase that and help you feel more confident walking in that. All right. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.